Hi everyone, in this video we're going to learn how to style our website. So in the last video we were able to write our code and create this website for how to train your Frenchie that included a large heading, a paragraph, a hyperlink, and a picture, right? Now you'll notice my website's pretty dull. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of color to it. Uh, or personality. So I want to add some of that to it. I want to change up the font styles. I want to add some color to my fonts, a border around my picture, and some sort of background color. So I'm going to come on back to my HTML file. I'm going to start by adding in a background color. So in order to add in a background color or any type of style into your website, we need to follow our style formula. I'm going to do this just down here on line 19 just to re refresh your memory about the style formula. So that's when we write element style equals open quotes property colon value semicolon property to value to, right? Semicolon quotes greater than sign. So the element depends on what am I styling. If I'm styling the entire website, I'm going to use body instead of the word element here. If I am styling just a large heading, I would use H1. If I was doing a small heading, I would do H6. If I was styling a paragraph, I would do the P tag, right? I can also add style into my images as well as my um, hyperlinks if I wanted to. Style, that word stays the same. Again, we know style is an attribute because it's blue. It comes right before the equal sign and it can be paired with many different elements depending on what you're trying to style, right? And style just means how am I customizing my website? How am I making my website look pretty? After the equal sign, again, always quotes, right? What a property is, is what are we changing about the website? Are we changing the color of the font, the color of the background? the font style, um, or the border. Those are the properties that we know thus far. There are lots more, but those are the ones that we've learned in this course. Value is just the value that's associated with the property, right? So if I'm doing the color of a font that's blue, I need to write the word blue in here. If I want a specific shade of blue, I can use the W3 Schools color picker wheel, right? Um, and then you can add more than one property to any element that you're styling. So I could change the font color and use the color property for here. And I could also change the font style by using the font family property here, right? And those would have different values. For font family, it would be like Arial font, for example, right? So it's really important to understand the style formula and then to understand how to substitute in for it. Think of it like kind of a math formula, right? So. I want to start by adding a background color. So in my open body tag, right, I always add style to the open tags. And in this case, the only uh, tags we're styling are body, H1, the P tag, and maybe the image, right? So I'm going to come into the open body tag that already is there. I don't need to add another one. There should only be one open body tag in your HTML file. I'm going to hit space style, adding in that attribute, extra information of styling, equal sign, open quote, the property is going to be background, don't forget the G, right, in the word background, colon, colon uh, separates the property from its value, um, and in this case, I'm going to use the color picker wheel, and I'm going to pick maybe some sort of like light blue or greenish color, I'm going to use this one. So I'm going to copy the hexadecimal code here. Hexa just means six, right? It's so like a hexagon of six sides. This has six characters with the hashtag symbol, right? So this is a hexadecimal code. I'm going to copy it, come back to my website, and I'm going to paste that in here. So you could put in the word for the color, or you could get more specific with a certain shade by putting in the hexadecimal code. Um, again, from that W3 Schools Color Picker website, right? So I then need to do semicolon, right? Because the semicolon is what separates two properties from each other. 
So colon separate the value from its property. Property one from property two is separated with a semicolon. So I put that in here as best practices um, in order for me to be ready for another property if and when I decide to add it into the body. Notice how I have these closing tags as red. That indicates there's some sort of error, right? So I'm going to check back to the code I just wrote, right? I have body style equals open quote, background colon, the color, semicolon. Uh-oh, I forgot to add my quotation mark, right? Notice the second I added that quotation mark because they come in pairs, everything else went back to green, right? So I'm going to delete this just to show you what our website looks like now. So publish, deploy as web app, add new project version, added background color, update, latest code. Yay, I now have this like mint green background. Great. Now I want to change the font style for both my main heading, the large heading, and the paragraph. So I'm going to go to a website called Google Fonts, right? So I already Googled this in advance. Now there's thousands of types of fonts. Uh, well, not thousands, hundreds, because it says here there's 991. So I can literally scroll and look for fonts this way, and it gives me like a preview of what these look like. If you know of a font that you really like, you can go ahead and type that in. One of my favorite fonts is called Railway. So I'm going to choose the Railway font. Okay, and I just want the normal thin one. Notice there's multiple styles that you can choose from. I'm going to choose select this style, and that's going to add it into my selected family over here on the right. You can find that just by clicking on these three boxes with the plus sign. That's your selected family. I'm not done choosing how many fonts I want, so I'm going to hold off on grabbing any information from the Google Fonts website. Instead, I'm going to go back, right? And I'm also going to get a font that I like called Luckiest Guy. Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to click Select This Style. So now over here, you'll notice I have two different selected families. I have Luckiest Guy and I have Railway, right? In order to use this in your website, you need to click off of Review and onto the word Embed. And then you need to pull both parts of these pieces of information. One is the link, right? So this link gets copied into the head of your HTML. This is how your website talks to the Google font website in order for it to be able to pull these different fonts into your website, okay? So I'm gonna copy this whole piece. This is my link, again, so it links from the Google font website to my website going back to my HTML, and it said to put it inside of the head. I already have title inside of the head, so I can make space right after the title on line five. I'm going to paste that in, right? And I just backspaced it up. So I have my link ref. That links my website to this Google font website for these two fonts, Luckiest Guy and Railway, but that doesn't actually put the font in anywhere. So what I need to do is now go back to the Google font website again, and I'm going to add these specific families using their CSS rules where I want to style it, right? So Luckiest Guy is the font that I want to use for my large heading. So I'm only copying the property font family Luckiest Guy cursive, just that one for right now, because they're two separate ones here, right? And I'm going to go back. I'm going to now put style into my h1, right? open tag. So h1 style equals open quote. And all I have to do is paste in my font family for luckiest guy and then close the quote. right? Now I'm going to do the same thing, but this time for my p tag, I'm going to add in the style for the font family. So I have to go back and grab it. I'm going to highlight this font family. Oops, I missed the F, there we go. Copy, and I'm going to paste that in here. And again, add the quote. If I save this, publish, deploy as web app, new project version, added font styles. 
So notice on the on the style quiz, a lot of you thought the property for font family was font style. It is not indeed. To change the font style, you need to use the property called font family. So here we go. I change the font style, right? So this is what it was prior. This is what it is now. So how to train your Frenchie. It's super easy to train your Frenchie. You just need to follow the instructions, right? So what I want to do now is I want to change the color of this H1 uh, heading. So I'm going to go back to my color picker. A good contrast in color with this um, like mint green. I'm going to do like a dark purple. So I'm going to copy this hexadecimal code. Okay, and we're going to paste that into our H1 style, right? So right after I finish the property for the font family, I'm going to do color, colon, paste, hexadecimal code, semicolon, right? So I'm setting up for another property if I wanted to. Save, publish, deploy as web app, new version, added font color to large heading. Update, latest code. Good, now it's purple. Awesome, this looks great. Last thing I wanna do is add in a border for my picture. So I'm going to now go to line 13 where I have my image tag. After I have all of the height and width attributes, I'm going to space and do a style attribute, right? Equals, this time the property I'm using is border and I'm going to use colon. Again, I'm going to come back here. I'm going to choose a color. Maybe I'll do some sort of yellow for the border. Copy that. Paste that in. Ooh, let me scroll over so you can see it better. No space is needed. Uh, then I'm going to decide on the type of border. I'm going to do a double border. So remember, you have double, dotted, dashed, and solid, right? And then you can choose how thick you want the double border to be. I'm going to do 7 px, 7 pixels. So those needed spaces in between, between the color, the type of border, and the thickness of the border. And again, I'm going to close this up. Remember, oops, this got moved down here. I'm gonna delete that over there. And remember, it's a self-closing tag because it's an image. Everything looks green, good to go for all the elements. I'm gonna save that. Publish, deploy as web app. Let's see if that worked. New, added, image, Border. And again, I'm creating the multiple versions so I can always go back to an older version of my project if I want to. There it is. Yellow double border right around my Frenchie puppy image. Uh, so there you have it. Now it's your turn to style your website.